Well, good evening. Uh, two uh, topics to cover. You all remember Steve, our buddy Cutworm, was posing the question after the seven questions. He thought it'd be interesting hearing everyone's story about what car they drove when they took their driver's license test. And Steve uh, didn't forget, good question. Uh, and later I want to talk about another new hobby I'm getting into to uh, get off the concrete and try to save my legs. I'm still going to finish the bus, but after that, I um, need to find a hobby where I can sit down and get off that hard concrete. <clears throat> so, Steve's question. What did you take your driver's license test in? Mine was a 1959 Pontiac station wagon. Three speed on the column. That's the first stick shift I learned how to drive. My fishing buddy, he had six kids and he did drywall. He was a finisher, you know, with the drywall mud. And the station wagon was his work vehicle. That he had all of his tools, his drywall tools, his stilts. Uh, and <clears throat> he took me out to a local school where they kind of had a nice paved lap that went around the school and showed me how to drive a stick shift. And yes, uh, who didn't let the clutch out and kill the motor? I mean, even them 59s, you, you had to be giving her the gas while you were letting the clutch out. So every evening, we would take a ride to the school and I had my permit and once I got good enough to where I was doing good to go around the school, he would let me drive it back home, which was only two miles. <clears throat> so now it comes time for the driver's test. My greatest fear was, I guess anybody's with a stick shift, parallel parking on an incline going up. And yes, my instructor on the steepest hill. Didn't even know they had them in that part of the country in Gary, Indiana. Gary's norm, you know, it's flat. <laughs> but he found one. And I had to parallel park a station wagon with three speed. I managed to do it. I didn't hit either car. Now, I think I had to help my neighbor change the clutch because I might have smoked his clutch a little bit. Maybe even he checked his flywheel. But um, I passed. And that was my first vehicle and taking my driver's license test in. Next topic. <clears throat> You all know, <clears throat> legs are not good. Spend too much time, and they're more and more, you know, having swelling issues and threats of blood clots. And that's not good. <clears throat> but my doctor knows me. Knows I can't sit. I got to use these. I, uh, you know, I'm a tinkerer. I, I have to have a hobby. So he says, look, you need to have a hobby sitting on this, not standing on concrete. <clears throat> now he remembers when I made musical instruments because I got into exotic woods and had contact dermatitis and had to get put on prednisone or steroids to get over that. And finally, 
He was the one that suggested finding another hobby. What do you like doing, working on cars? Well, maybe you should work on the cars. And I did, and my son and I had fun. And the legs were a lot better. So now, here we are. So do I, so I told my son, I found out he's big into guns. Uh, you know, like Moselock, um, I'm not against guns. Uh, where I grew up, there was in the city, there was no hunting. Uh, the closest thing I came to a gun was when I was in my early 20s. My cousin was a member of the Isaac Waltons, and he introduced me to trap shooting. And I loved it. I mean, it was, it was fun. I mean, it was exciting. Um, <clears throat> and then we had double barrel shotguns, side by sides, I guess they call them now, and single shot 12 gauge, double barrel 12 gauge, single shot 12. And they were, they had some of these over and unders. Browning did, but boy, the price of them, I, I couldn't touch. I mean. The, the Browning gun I was looking at was $50 more than what I paid for my first car. So, I told my son what I would like and most interested in is the old flintlocks and muzzle loaders. Mainly the history of the gun, the builders, the artwork, you know, the work in wood carving, metal carving. I mean, they're, they're a piece of art. I mean, they really are. And that really sparks my interest. You know, it, it really makes me want to see, hey, can I, can I do this? And my son laughed and he said, well, Dad, you know, you build instruments. You went to Menards, you got some wood that had shrink wrap over it, glued it up, and made a mantle in And he's right, I did. In fact, I showed it once before, but here it is. And he's exactly right. Um, so, I went to Menards, and the wood that's in the shrink wrap, this was mahogany, and glued it together, and carved it, and made a mantle in same with the neck and the top is the only kind of wood Menards didn't have it's spruce and I purchased that from a music building supply and I had the top on and the spruce was thin I had to carve it too and I think I remember if you remember I told the story where I tied it up here was going to give it the last clear coat and it fell and the spruce wood broke. The wood that I bought from Menards, it held. Um, not sure when I'm gonna finish the top. But a lot of the wood I started having issues with was like the ebony, the fingerboards, and some of the other wood. So the point my son was making, Dad, you can go to Menards buy some wood off the shelf and come home and make this, surely you can make a gun stock. So what did I do today? I did just that. I, I went to Menards and here it is. You know, that's that wood you buy from them. You, you know, you see it where they have it in the can, little plastic. This is solid maple. I sorted through a lot, and to my surprise, there's some beautiful tiger striping in here. I thought it was the plastic, but I tore some of the plastic away, and it's not. You know, it's it's gorgeous. I mean, it really is. Uh, so, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a Kentuckian long rifle. Right here it is. Yep, next time you see... I'll be pointing a gun. So, I went to Dixieland, it's a muzzle loader shop, and I got the barrel for the Kentucky and Long Rifle, 50 cal. So, with this piece of wood, I'm going to make the wood that mounts the barrel 
and then underneath holds the ramrod. So also, I stopped by Hobby Lobby. Yeah, Stoney, I'm sure they're not the highest quality ones, but I got wood carving tools. And Stoney, um, I might be calling you up, getting some tips and advice on carving wood. Also, give it a little bling bling. I don't know, bling bling was a word back before the Civil War. I got some gold wire. Do some gold wire inlay. And I lost the one I had with the mandolin, but went to Menards too when I got the wood. I got a profile gauge. There's a couple other tools I should have picked up that I'll get. So that is one of my next projects. And I'll upload another video showing you another project I'm doing on similar to the muzzle loader, but it's the other extreme that my son got me involved in. So I will bring you guys along with the journey. See how this board turns into, yeah man, a muzzle loader. This thing's not warped too bad either. Imagine. You know, when you buy wood and shrink wrap, it's pretty good shape. What was, I don't know if it's Christmas, but this stuff was on sale too. But this is my practice one. Um, probably be a nice wall hanger. And then, if I do have the skills I think I have, I will order the actual highly figured maple, maybe sugar maple, from, there's a couple websites, Hearts, and I'm learning quite a few of them watching YouTube, you know, where you can get the gun blanks at. There's some amazing craftsmen out there, but, you know, I would like to do like they do, um, and I'll probably be visiting with Rusty Glove Box, and that is, you know, using the forge, and getting the anvil and pounding away, and uh, really making the steel hardware for the gun, and the butt, and the trigger guard using the anvil, hammer, and metal. And we'll see. Sometimes, you know, you watch YouTube and you see the true craftsmen do it and you think, wow, oh, I can do that. But, you know, they've been doing it for years, but you never know until you try. Plus, you know, for me it's exciting. It's exciting to do a different project see if I have the skill set. You know, I've never been one of those hobby persons who, like the mandolin, built one mandolin, okay, I'm going to build 50 more, you know, and, and sell them. Have some five-year waiting list to get Busman 54's mandolin. It's kind of, build one or two, yep. Been there, done that, what's next? Did the banjo. Okay, the banjo was fun, okay, what's next? I did lap dulcimers. Lap dulcimers, that was pretty cool. Built one each for the kids. What's next? Oh, they got these things called hammer dulcimers. Built one of those. So, then I started really having issues with the contact dermatitis with the wood. and Got into the beetles more with my son. So, that's all I have to share today, and I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, and we will upload my progress, both victories and defeats. I'm not ashamed. That's Busman54. Everyone have a good holiday.
we'll see you on the next part.